It is our practice to remember Jesus at the Lord's table every week. Every Lord's Day, we take the Lord's Supper. And I've been asked on occasion, why do you take the Lord's Supper every week? Doesn't that kind of become a routine and lose its, its meaning and its significance to you? And I always give the same answer, no, absolutely not, just the opposite. And there's, there's actually two reasons for me personally why I want to take the Lord's Supper every Sunday. One is Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. And this is a memory device. It, it plants the gospel firmly in our hearts and in our minds as long-term memory. And I want to have the gospel in my heart and in my mind till the very day I die. And memory is a funny thing. I, uh, it seems like as, as we get older, the list of things that we forget gets longer and the list of things that we remember gets shorter. Have you, any of you experienced that? Well, I want to make sure that the gospel is always at the top of my list of things to remember throughout my entire life. And so, remembering what Jesus did for me at the cross in this time of communion keeps that message of the gospel forefront in my random access memory, ready to retrieve at any moment. And I know that I'll remember Jesus and the message of the gospel till the very day I die. The other reason is uh, I want to be ready for the return of Christ. Paul said that as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So the Lord's table is a time to look back at what Jesus did at the cross, but it's also a time to look forward and be ready for when he returns. It's reminding us of that promise. Right now we're going through Genesis, uh, the flood account in Genesis 6, 7, 8, and 9, and, and Jesus and Peter both referred to the flood for this very reason, to remind us to be ready for the return of Christ. One of those passages is in Luke 17, and this is what, what Jesus says about the return of Christ. You know, and it's interesting because this year, 2020, I've been asked several times by people, Mike, Mike, do you think all these weird, crazy things that are happening in 2020 are signs that Jesus is going to return this year? And uh, I always say the, the same thing. I, you know, I, I don't know. They could be signs of the end times. But here's one thing I do know. Whether they are signs or not, Jesus wants us to always be ready. And look at what he says here in, in Luke 17, starting verse 24. He says, For just like the lightning, when it flashes out of one part of the sky and shines to the other part of the sky, so will the Son of Man be in his day. He says it's, it's going to happen, and it's going to take people by surprise, like lightning does. Okay? It's going to happen pretty fast. But then in verse 25, he says, But first... He, the Son of Man, Jesus, must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. He reminds us of the gospel. Even when we're thinking about the return of Christ, remember what Jesus did for us at the cross. And then he talks about Noah in verse 26. And just as it happened in the days of Noah, so it will be in the days of the Son of Man. They were eating and they were drinking. They were marrying. They were being given in marriage until the day Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. And he goes on to say how uh, we need to be ready at any time for the return of Christ. And in that message, he points to the ark, Noah and the flood. You know, that's a great reminder of, of Judgment Day. But he also points us to the cross. The Son of Man must suffer. And he suffered for our sins. So I want to always remember that. And I want to always be ready for when he returns. What about you? Are you ready for when Jesus returns?
Let's think about these things as we participate in the Lord's Supper this morning. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for the message of the gospel, this good news that we can have forgiveness and eternal life through Jesus Christ. And we're thankful for this time every first day of the week when we can focus on what Jesus did for us and remember him and also look forward to the return of Christ. God, I pray as we have this time of reflection and evaluation, thinking about what Jesus did for us, that it would prepare our hearts for the return of Christ. Help us to be ready always for the return of Jesus. And God, I pray that the message of the gospel would never be forgotten, that it would always be at the top of our list of things to always remember. We pray this in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen.